All right next up is the abdominal examination okay so first of all you must always expose your patient from nipple to mid thigh okay we must always expose your patient from nipple to mid thigh remember that so after grip, gripping your patient to greet create rapport introduce and ask for permission and you are sure that you're on the right side of the patient you must always ask for ask the patient's permission to expose from nipple to mid thigh however for the sake of examination and privacy we usually ask the examiner sir or ma i'd want to expose the patient from nipple to mid thigh most examiners will say that may not be necessary just go ahead with your examination okay then you continue however you must always be seen to state that you would like to expose your patient from nipple to mid thigh because in, in your abdominal examination you could also pick out for hernias so you need to be properly exposed okay however if the patient if the the examiner asks you to continue without full exposure you want to expose the patient as much as is possible expose the all the layers of the abdomen and just the groin a little part of the groin above the genitalia okay so like every other examination first principle we must always inspect inspect palpate percuss and auscultate all right so in inspecting we look at the, the abdomen must be seen to be looking at the abdomen it is showmanship okay look at the abdomen in four to five seconds okay then you stoop you stoop and look at the abdomen you must be seen to be looking at the abdomen okay then you go to the foot of the bed all right stoop once more okay and look at the abdomen you must be seen to be doing this look above the abdomen stoop at the side of the bed stoop at the foot of the bed all right so you inspect so why you inspect these are the first three parts of your inspection then you ask the patient to look the other way and cough mr desmond please can you look the other way all right can you cough <coughs> again <coughs> all right so while the patient is, is coughing you're looking at the abdomen you're trying to look at the areas for possible hernias all right so do that so that is i think you do in your inspection you want to look at the side of over the abdomen look at the side of the bed at the foot of the bed and ask the patient to cough you want to see if there are any visible cough impulses okay so after that we want to palpate all right the first part of our palpation is the light palpation the second part is the deep palpation okay so for light palpation remember we must always go in order you know we will first understand the nine quadrant the nine regions of the abdomen and we must go in a particular order okay and we must always be seen to ask the patient if the patient feels pain on any part of the abdomen and your examination must start from the farthest point from the point of pain okay mr desmond do you feel pain on any part of your abdomen no okay all right so mr desmond doesn't feel pain on any part of his abdomen so i can choose to examine from any part of the abdomen if for example mr desmond feels pain on the right iliac fossa then i must start my examination from the most distal point from that from that point okay so i'd want to examine light palpation we just rub our the palmar part of our fingers slightly above the nine quadrant we don't indent okay so You must be seen to be looking at the patient while doing that. Be conscious of, of wincing, which, which may indicate that the patient is in pain. Okay? So I'll take that again. Light palpation. Just the palmar part of your digits on the quadrant, starting from the point most distal to the point of pain. And you must always be seen to be looking at the patient's face to pick up possible wincing when the patient experiences pain. Okay, so that's light palpation. Now, deep palpation will indent our fingers more into the, the regions we're examining and will move in a circular manner. We want to check out for possible masses in particular um, regions. Okay, so we'll start from the region most distal to the point of pain. 
or any point that we've elicited on the abdomen where the patient experiences pain, we'll try and make sure that that point is the last point to be encountered in our palpation. Okay? So, so deep palpation. Okay, so if at any point, if at any point of examination you find a lump, then you must examine the lump as appropriate. Okay, however, if there's no lump, you continue with your palpation, your abdominal palpation. Now, the next point of abdominal palpation is actually to palpate for the organs. Now, so many organs can be enlarged in the abdomen, but abdominal palpation targets commonly three organs, the liver, the spleen, and the kidneys left and right kidneys, okay? So we'll try and, uh, and examine these three organs. However, if based on your history, a patient um, identifies some features which are relating to other organs. For example, a patient with lower urinary tract symptoms and you may think that the patient is in a, a, an acute retention, they may also want to examine the suprapubic area for the bladder. But conventionally, we just examine the liver, the spleen, and the kidney. While starting to examine the liver, we will start at the right iliac area, okay? So we start at the right iliac area and we go up to check for the liver, okay? So and at every point, ask the patient to breathe in and out. With every breath up, the patient's diaphragm moves up and you dig in to check if the, the liver will come in contact with your palm, okay? So Mr. Desmond, breathe in, out. With every breath out, you go in, all right? So breathe in, out, okay? All right, so breathe in, out, okay? All right, so if you feel the liver, um, enlarged liver at any point, then you must actually find out the span, the span of the liver. And to get the span of the liver, you must percuss, percuss the chest, you get a tympanitic sound, you know, a resonant sound up until the area of hepatic dullness. That's where the liver starts. Then you start also, you mark with a pen, okay? Mark with a pen. Also, percuss up. Find out where the liver ends and also mark with a pen. Then you measure with your tip. You must be seen to be doing all these things, okay? So if the liver is enlarged, for example, then we percuss. So the um, hepatic numbness begins from this point. Then you mark with a pen. Mark with a pen. Okay? So. So hepatic numbness also at this point. So, so I get my tape and I measure. And that will give me my liver span. Okay? So in addition to knowing the liver span, you also want to know the liver is the liver tender at the no okay is the at the edges irregular because it's going to give us an idea of what pathology that is causing the liver enlargement okay so when we palpate we're looking at the patient's face if the liver is enlarged we're looking at the patient's face while we look at the surface while we feel for the surface and we feel for nodules okay so if the patient expresses any sign of discomfort they may tell us that the liver is not only enlarged, but it's also tender, okay? And it may give us an idea of what pathology we're looking at, all right? So after examining for the liver, next up, we're examining for the spleen. Also for the spleen, the spleen is located on the left hypochondriac area. So we start our examination diagonally. You start from the right iliac fossa and move in a diagonal fashion to the left hypochondrium, okay? So we, we palpate. Breathing, out. Breathing, out. Okay? So if the liver is also enlarged, we must also be seen to measure the extent of enlargement from the subcoastal area, the lower coastal margin, to the point of enlargement of the, of the spleen. Next up, we want to ballot the kidneys. We want to check 
if the kidneys are palatable or bimanually palpable. Okay, so what we do is that we start from the part, the right kidney, which is closest to us. So your left hand under, try and push it. Just relax, relax, relax on my hand. So you try and push. Make sure you are examining on the lumbar area. So the left, left hand trying to push while your right hand. Okay, on the lumbar area, just apply some pressure on the lumbar area and your left hand trying to push it up. Okay, if the kidneys are balotable, you feel the kidneys hitting on the palmar surface of your fingers directly over the lumbar area. So you put some pressure here and move. So your right hand to the right lumbar, while for left, use your other hand to support the back. Push it again, put some pressure here in the, in the left lumbar, okay, and push, push up with your other hand, okay. So find out if the kidneys are palatable or not. So that's for palpation, for palpation for organomegaly. Check for the liver, the spleen, and the kidney. This is conventional for any abdominal examination. Next up is percussion. Now, once we percuss, usually we, we percuss and I try to identify. If there's ascites, if there's accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity, okay. So we can find out if there's ascites with fluid trail, shifting dullness, okay. So we want to know if there's shifting dullness, shifting dullness in the abdomen. If not, we want to know if there's fluid trail. So these are signs that will help us know if there's ascites in these are patients or not, okay. So for shifting dullness, we want to percuss, we percuss the abdomen from the midline away towards the lateral part of the abdomen, okay? Remember, all your precautions should be at the wrist level. So if there's area of dullness, if there's any area of dullness, you ask the patient to turn. Sir, Mr. Demi, can you turn to this side? Just while lying down, okay? Okay? For a while, okay? And precaution further. Okay, so if, sorry, so if the shifting dullness, by turning, fluid will gravitate from the dependence portion to the midline because you've turned the patient to that side. So shifting dullness is characteristic of ascites. It's a sign that is indicates that this ascites, all right? For fluid trail, you ask the patient, actually you need an assistance, okay? So you can easily ask the examiner to help you dampen the effect or you ask a patient, Sir, Mr. Desmond, can you use your hand and place in the midline? Okay. So, you ask for, for, okay? Then you place your other hand, use this, use this hand, use this hand. Okay? You place your other hand on the left side of the patient and you strike. And you just tap the patient a little. Okay? So, the reason why the patient or your assistant usually is, is preferable that you use somebody else other than the patient, maybe examiner, ask the examiner, please, I will need an assistant to elicit for um, flu trail. So the reason why the examiner or the assistant is put, placing the hand on the midline is actually to dampen the transfer of vibrations through the subcutaneous tissue, okay? So that if you feel vibrations on our palm on the other side of the body, it means that there's fluid. That means the transmission was via the fluid and also positive for ascites. Okay? So then for auscultation of the abdomen, you want to auscultate for bowel sound. You want to listen for bowel sound. Okay? So it's either you listen, there's areas you can listen for bowel sound. You could also you could listen in the right iliac um, fossa area, or you can listen also two centimeters away from the umbilicus okay so you just place your stethoscope and you listen with the the bell listening with the bell of the telescope for bowel sound okay and ideally you should listen you should count the bowel sound for three minutes but because your exam the examination is should be done for three minutes just demonstrate this what you do for 15 seconds 
and move on with your other examination. Right, so that's how you do an abdominal examination.